All right. Yes. Shakira's popping in the background. Yeah, we are celebrating today. Welcome to the Real Estate Happy Hour. We're two days away from the big it holiday. Is, uh, it is Trace DeMaio. Trace DeMaio. So in celebration, we've got the, uh, the Dos Equis. Happy hour to all. Hope everybody's doing well. I don't always drink beer, but what I do is Dos Equis. That's right. All that's right? right. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we, so that's, our, that's our intro music. Absolutely. So, so we're out of man. that. Cinco de Mayo. You see, do y'all yeah. do anything fun? Y'all go to the Mexican restaurants or anything? No, I'm uh, actually going to be playing golf a little bit on Cinco de Mayo with, with Brady. So that's going to be Hey, good. nothing like taking your son out for a little. Hey, if it gets any hotter, though, I mean, do we have to get hot already? Man, it oh went overnight. Just straight heat. Out. And you notice it in the car, right? You get in the car and it's like a sauna. Oh, it just like in an your, oven. I don't see how women in skirts do it. Like, you know, where you're, like, I was today, I was sitting here with my hand down there. It's so hot. Man, I, if I was a woman, I'd have to have cooled seats. Here we go. I'm telling you. Here we go. I'm not go. a woman, but uh, I would have to if I did. All right. Well, I'm about to tune uh, in here live. Hey, Stephanie. Hope Let's you're doing well. Here. Kathleen, hello. So I'm going to turn my volume down. Well, yeah. Say, so yeah. busy week. Inventory's still low. Buyers are still out there. They're out there. The stuff. Um, you know, I had somebody uh, talk to me today, and I, I just want to warn everybody about this. We went back and forth via text, okay? So uh, I tried to call her, and she said, she said you know what? I want to look at the house first. I said, that's huh. fine, but in this market, right. look, you need to come with a pre-approval letter in hand when you walk in the door because there's going to be other offers out there that are beating you out. And and we don't have time after you love the house to figure things out, do we? Not in this market. No. I mean, we, we're seeing things turn. And the problem is you're going to be in a competitive situation right away. You every know, time. And, I mean, every time. And it's gotten worse. You know, what's really funny is these investors are wanting to hop in. I'm like, oh, good luck, yeah. you know, uh, because you're wanting a deal deal. And you're not going to get a deal deal on the hot, hot houses, you know? So Yeah, this is not... Tisa, is, what's happening? Yeah, this is not the market to get a huge deal in At, unless it is in bad shape and you've got no other... The, the problem is you've got too many buyers, right? There's too much competition. It's supply and demand. Absolutely. Supply and demand. I mean, you got you got very low supply. By the way, you know, I did pull the numbers. I mean, we're at uh, 3.9 months of inventory. 3.9 months, which basically means we are in a seller's market, as you, you probably already, we've talked about before. But, and remember, a six months of inventory equals a balanced market. And just in case you're wondering what that means, 3.9 months, it means if we had, so it would take us 3.9 months to sell every house that's currently on the market okay, right no now. No more new ones come on. No more coming on. And so that's what that is. Uh, my Sarah. mother is watching. Sarah Adams, I think we saw her saw pop Sarah. in there. I just saw Sarah, matter of fact. Uh She's buying a lovely house over in Vestavia, and I think you're you're gonna yeah, help I'm her. Yeah, handling her financing and I'm yeah, handling finance for her sister. So I talked to Sarah this morning. Yeah, about smart girl, for her sister, uh, absolutely. Uh, and my mother, so I got to watch my, my mouth today, right? Yes. So and and you know one of the things about uh, actually the conversation that we had this morning was uh, that, that we'll highlight some later on today, but. You know, just when you're when you're looking at purchasing a home, thinking about uh, the numbers and your timeline, how long you're going to be in the house, um, you know, so a lot of those things make a difference when you're when you're setting up the financing and, and really putting together the best mortgage program for your situation. Absolutely, each one's so different. And you know, one thing we wanted to start with, you know, we try to start with some local stuff going on here in the area. You know, one thing is uh, everybody's seen the JD Power trade; they rank everything. I think it's a kind of uh, they rank the banks. They rank a Man, bunch of different industries. I, I see the same companies with J.D. Power. I don't know if it's made up <laughs> or not. but Well, it's kind of interesting. Howard Cannon, great American, should run for governor, but he won't. But he should. See Howard right Howard there? Howard Cannon. Yeah, should run. Anyway, um, they came out with their top for our region, which probably includes Tennessee, Mississippi. They came up with, uh, in Alabama, they came up with their the top banks of the most satisfied customers. Customers, okay. Right. And uh, one thing, let me grab my list here because it was it was quite interesting. Um, who was at the top? Uh, and a lot of it had to do with the with digital versus because you know there's a lot of folks. Almost thirty percent of folks right now are going straight digital with their bank, right? They're yeah. going online only. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's that's a trend we see in our business too because you you know we used to get, I mean people used to get bank statements in the mail. Right, and now I ask borrowers, a lot of the younger borrowers, what a bank statement is, and they don't know what to do with that. 
You know, Absolutely. If, if you, you, you do online banking, everybody's moved to paperless. It's been that way for a long time. They actually, some, some banks actually give you a discount for paperless. Mm -hmm. And so you forget that they actually produce these things monthly that start off with the beginning balance. They have all your transactions. <laughs> it's a bank history, statement. And it's Cassie, a bank hello. statement. Awesome. Um, well, and one thing they talked about was that the most satisfied customer of any bank was one that went to the bank two times in the last, uh, I believe it was two branch, two or more times, but heavily used online banking. That was your most satisfying. So they visited the branch. They visited the branch. And quite frankly, that's yeah. one thing where I think that I think I've read another article saying that they're worried about is that these banks don't understand their own customer. They want see what happens with a lot of these businesses really is they, they shift all the way one way and forget that people also want to be treated, have a good in branch experience when they do go. Man, but yeah. they said the number one failure on this on the digital side with these banks is communication of communicating product and that kind of thing. We're not talking about like Wells Fargo when they just royally screwed everybody, right? You know, in terms, of, and we're not talking about the mortgage. We're talking about the bank, um, and you know, they're not engaging with these digital customers. But here's the locally, the top banks finishing first was Trustmark National Bank. I think they're out of Mississippi. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> PNC Bank. Okay. Regions finished seventh. Wells Fargo, how in the world they finished eighth is asinine to me, considering they, they stole. They're so big. I mean, it's amazing none of their folks are in, not local people, uh, but the national folks should be in jail for what they did. Uh, First Tennessee Bank, uh, BB&T at 12, Compass at 13, Bank Corps South at 14, and then... Look at this. Bank of America, I mean, basically fell off the list, basically. I don't. I, I assume they must be in Tennessee. Uh, Man, you talk about a commodity. I mean, uh, how tough would it be when, when all you're dealing with, and, and they never come into the branch, and all you're dealing with was their interface. And I know a lot of there's Ally is one of the online banks. Yeah, good, um, good interest rates. Good interest rates there. Absolutely. Uh, even on the checking, and, and, and they pay all of your ATM fees. You can go to any ATM. See, that's beautiful. They, that, that ATM can charge you six bucks, twelve bucks. Doesn't matter. They'll, they'll refund it. So, you know, a lot of these banks are, are specializing in online. They don't even have branches. So, which is crazy. It's interesting that you say the happiest ones went in to the two branch. times, yeah, two or more times in the last sixty days or whatever, and heavily used online banking. I mean, and they're finally getting to the point where I think that uh, everything's easier now. And but yet there's that time where I have a question about my accountant. We even I that I love the digital, but I don't always trust what I'm looking at. Is that really what I'm seeing, or whatever it may be? Now, uh, next talking about one of your favorite topics because I bet you were you an Eagle Scout? I was not. I'm shocked. He would have been kicked out. Probably. I was but. not. Uh, I was not part of the Scouts. Josh DeJong. Man, the I mean, this guy is building an empire of real estate and other businesses down in Texas. So, Josh, good to see you. Very nice. Um, one He's thing, laughing at you. <laughs> Somebody. Hey, is. well, I might be, but he has a putting green. He's on top of a uh, of a big skyscraper. Yeah. By our standard skyscraper, yeah. uh, and he has a putting green outside now. Nice. Hey, and it's not just like some wooden deck like we would build. Yeah. You know, it's we'd nice, have a bullet. Huh? Hey, it's top notch. Absolutely. Now. Uh, Boy Scouts taking boys Boy Scouts. out of the name of taking Boy Scouts. Taking boys out of the name. I'm telling you, everybody's getting offended. I mean, it's. I mean, I mean, what in the world? What's well, next? So, what was what's the reasoning there? Well, obviously, yeah, they want to be more inclusive, and they and, and that that now that they're admitting girls. See, I, here's the thing. Okay, sure, I, I didn't see eye to eye with the idea of no offense to anybody out there. The idea that Boy Scouts would be for boys and Girl Scouts for girls. I mean, call me old school, but hey, okay, got progress, right? But if I'm joining. If I'm voluntarily joining your organization, I'm going to tell you to change your name. I mean, it seems crazy. I've heard worse. I mean, I, I heard it's somebody called a boy scout su sued over coffee being hot. Yeah, good documentary by the way. Yeah. That. Um. But but anyway, so they're now so going to be scouts BSA. Scouts BSA. But by the way, what's so dumb about this whole thing is that BSA stands for what? Boy Scouts of America. But why would you change the name? It, it, it's a silly topic. It's kind of stupid. It's kind of BS, and they oh, changed the name to Scouts BSA. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a BS. That seems like a joke. It is a BS thing now. It kind of seems like a joke to me. Well, David, uh, let's get some real estate talk, which is why we're here. Let's do it. So we, we talked about the inventory, uh, and here's what's going Tim on. Mark. You know, we talked about the client that, that wants to wait. They want to look at the house. And let me tell you, 
you know, that's just not working right now. And, and the other thing is the cost of waiting. There's a lot of people that are on the fence. They're, they're watching what's going on. Some of them are getting frustrated with the multiple offers. Maybe they decide to rent longer. And the cost of waiting is a, is a big deal right now. What so, do you mean by that? So look at it. If, if we look at just the average interest rate. So right now, average rates are around four and a half. Okay, we're probably yep. creeping up north of four and a half, but you know, starting the year oh, we we're four percent. So just a half a point, right? Change, and they're expecting rates to be at five by the end of the year. So you can expect these numbers, this math, to work from the cost of waiting from now till the end of the year. Um, so on a on a two hundred fifty thousand dollars house with twenty percent down, so it's two hundred thousand dollars sure. loan. Sure. At four uh, percent, at four percent, that payment is nine hundred seventeen dollars a month. Really, principal and interest. Okay. Okay. Now, the uh, at four and a half percent, which is what it would be now. Okay. Now we're not even taking into account appreciation. That okay. house might cost you more today than it did at the beginning of the year, but let's let's say that's negligible. Okay. Let's say you're still paying two fifty. Sure. Nine hundred seventy-eight dollars now. So we're, what's that, about $50 more? That's $61 no. more a month. You can tell I did well at Auburn. <laughs> uh, $61 a month. Now, the other side of that is how much more money would you have to put down to get that same $917 payment? That would be an additional $12,000 because that's a $200,000 loan. So wow. you have to put down an additional $12,000 today. It's May the 3rd from January the 1st. We're talking about. So you, when you, where are you getting that twelve from? Walk me back through that. So one hundred eighty-eight thousand dollar loan is nine seventeen. You oh, get gotcha. the same monthly. Oh, same payment, month. Gotcha. Same monthly. Same payment. monthly payment. Yeah, an additional twelve thousand dollars you'd have to put down at four and a half percent to get. It's the crazy. Same monthly well, payment. and so now, we're, and that's not necessarily to scare, scare you. It's also to say what that we don't want you to get to five percent if you're thinking about selling. Yeah, it. yeah. So I, I would think now is not the time to wait. Um, and to think, well, we'll just let things calm down. We'll let things cool off. We'll, let, we'll wait till interest rates come down. I mean, you know, there's still reasons to buy a house. Your, your family's growing or you're downsizing or you're a first time home buyer and you, and you want the dream of home, home ownership. Uh, a lot of family wealth is tied to owning real estate. So there's still all those great reasons to buy. So don't let these, these fluctuations right now scare you away from doing something. Well, you know, Mark said it here, right here. Uh, Jay Williams, how are you? Uh, it's time to put your home in the market if you're a seller. Correct. Be careful. I agree 1,000% with that sentiment, but you better have a plan of where you're going. That's true. And we've got a couple of those situations that we're dealing with now with people that had their house sold, and then they've got to go out into this limited inventory and find a new house and I buy, think right? I think we got to be okay with going to an apartment or living with family or something because here's the thing: what you said here, for a, from a seller's standpoint, is you're going to get more money for that house right now. Yes. Uh, so you're going to be saving money along the way. Yeah, I mean, you, and you see posts on Facebook all the time: a contract in ten days, uh, <laughs> sold three offers before you listed. I mean, uh, things like that are happening all the time. And you know, sellers, a lot of people are in the situation where they need that money from the sale to purchase the new house. That's most so, people. Yeah, so they can't really do it backwards. I mean, we have every now and then we have some people that can that can uh, carry both or, or uh, buy the new one before they sell the well, old one. Well, talk about one thing that comes up occasionally is bridge loans. What what are we talking about oh, really man. when we talk about bridge loans? Did I feel you, that? It gave me a little heartburn. My, heartburn. Man, last couple months ago I had a bad experience. but What uh, happened? Oh, Because well. I, I, I think people hear the word bridge loan. Well, it, this th what this it? was an isolated event, and it, it was. It, I don't do the bridge loans here. Okay, we've got to refer the bridge loans out, and I had a. There's local a reason bank, for that, by the way. I had a local bank handling a bridge loan is a short term loan. That's what I was asking. Yeah, okay, it's, so a very, it's a short -term. very short term loan. Uh, so I had a local bank handling, and it just. And this bridges the gap between the time that you yeah. s sell your home or okay. don't sell your home. I get a new home. Okay, so yeah. So let's say that your house is worth two hundred thousand. You owe a hundred, okay. and you want to use part of that equity, but your house hasn't sold yet. Okay. So you go get a bridge loan. Let's say you go get a bridge loan to take out fifty thousand to put down on the purchase of the new home, and then once your old home sells, it's going to pay off your first mortgage and the bridge loan. Okay. Gotcha, so gotcha. that's basically how the bridge loan works. And are these very costly? Not extremely costly. Where's the bank making money? There, they, there are some fees. There are some. Li uh, I think there's like a 1% origination fee and um, some some smaller closing costs, but they're not as the you know typical cost of a, a regular first gotcha. mortgage. Hey, Jennifer. 
So they're they're making some money on a six month deal. Okay, so then what happens? What what makes them not the most ideal? Well, they're they're fine if this one specifically just <laughs> just closed ah, late. One of the good ones. Uh, this one just closed late. The borrower was upset. Uh, the agents were upset because it held up our purchase transaction and the communication on on this side well, of the bank just wasn't very good. Well, and that's the problem because you, now you have two different side, two different lenders that are on two different wavelengths. One's probably has a loan officer not making any money, right? And so we end up in a situation where it's probably not ideal. Yeah, I mean there there are some benefits to this because obviously it changes your it, it completely changes your financing because let's say you're going into the new house and you've got five percent down without right. the bridge loan, whereas with the bridge loan you might have twenty percent down. I mean those are two completely different loans, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you would rather have that permanent financing set up correctly and done the way you want it. And this is why I did it because I wanted them to be able to close on this new house and not have to fool with the financing. Otherwise, they'd have to sell their other house and then, then then take these funds over here and go back and pay the mortgage off and then get the the bank to recast it. You know, and what is it, what does that do to the the credit when when somebody goes and gets a bridge loan between then and when they? Uh, it's not really a big deal. They're going to pull the credit and. Uh, so, but so we're not having as long as you're not close. Yeah, it'll show show up as a short term loan. I mean, yeah, gotcha. we're not talking about we're not talking about doing this for marginal credit files. I mean. Well, no, yeah, abs yeah. absolutely. And when you say not marginal, are we talking seven twenty and better? Yeah, any more probably uh, less than seven hundred. You know, is you, you know we don't want to we don't want to play with the scores. Gotcha. under seven hundred. We don't want to do anything that's going to affect the score under seven hundred. Well, got Josh Kirk and Mike Bruno tuning in. Yeah. Hey, Michael, Josh. But anyway, so that's that's just a little bit on on you know another thing was right now interest rates were kind of reverting back to the mean. Okay, the what average. Do you mean by that? If we look at the average interest rates over the last uh, 20, 40 hey, years, Tom. it's about seven point seven five percent. Okay, yeah. So when the Fed stepped in in 2008, 2009, they started buying these treasuries and bringing, pulling those rates down and holding them down. Okay, they have stopped doing that now. So now right. we're going to revert back to that mean, and that's all you're seeing. That seven point seven five percent is the average. Right of where we've been at with, and, and if you take out the government's influence, the government's uh, involvement in keeping rates down, now that's gone. So naturally, they're going to gravitate back up. Well, and what are you seeing with the government? They're, when we talk about that, they're easing off, right? They've eased off the gas, essentially, of, of artificially because they right. believe now the market's going to, the bond market essentially yes. is going to control. Yeah, itself. yeah, the market is back to operating the way it should be uh, between the bond market, and stock market, and and that's. Uh, that's why you're seeing this relationship right. with the interest rates going up. Right. I mean, and are we still seeing a cap somewhere around 5% as we head into the summer? Um, yeah, I think uh, 5%, uh, depending on what type of finance you're doing. Obviously, we're seeing some some lender-paid mortgage insurance uh, loans over 5% now. Now, when we talk about that, you know, one of the things is with lender-paid mortgage insurance, because a lot of folks are asking us, you know, uh, what are my options? And I tell everybody, it's the total cost of the loan, right? We don't Man. just look at interest yeah. rate. Yes. Yes, the total cost of the loan, that is such a big deal. And, and it goes back to your time horizon. How long are you going to be in the house? Five to seven years? Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of uh, analysis and break-even analysis on 3% down and 5% down. Okay, and that's when the lender paid mortgage insurance comes in. And sometimes that break-even number... Uh, which means that you know this pro program A is going to win in 12 to 13 years. That's your break even, right? Mm -hmm. But program B has a lower monthly payment right now. With the lender paid, usually. Right. So are you willing to wait the 12 to 13 years to break even with program A, or would you rather just take the benefits of program B right now? Because I think what's interesting to a lot of people is, hello, Alvin, uh, is that you can have... Mortgage, uh, lender paid mortgage insurance on one that's actually going to have a higher interest rate but lower payment right? versus a lower interest rate. Because, see, what happens I see a lot is a lot of these first-time home buyers and stuff, they talk to their parent, and dad's over there just really filling them up with, it's about the interest rate. you got to get the best rate. And really, that's not true, right? It's kind of like the, I've always said, like, arms are terrible. No, they're not terrible. A lot of people say there's a use for them. There is. Right, there because... Is. It, and those it, are the best rate, right? 
absolute best rate. And what happens is with a five, let's say you have a five-year arm at a very good interest rate. It's not truly five years. You know that break-even analysis you just did? Oftentimes that five, that break-even where we start going negative to what we would have been in terms of we would have paid so much principal down in that first five years mm. that it really the break-even is eight years. So I, I think that everybody's got to look at their scenario uh, on their own. I, every, every, we all come in different places. Yeah, you know, I think, I th and I think a lot of people that are really worried about interest rate are, are just, uh, some people are scared that they're not going to get a great deal. And some people just don't know what else to ask. And I think it's important that you research the loan officer you're working with, look for online reviews, uh, find out how long they've been in the business. I mean, you can go to NMLS and look up their work history. You can see huh, what companies really? they've been with, how often they moved around. You've been around. with one. Yeah, I've been with one for 13 years. So you can look that stuff up at online and, and just, you want to find somebody that you trust, somebody that's going to take care of you. Absolutely. When you tell your kids that, you know, they, they got to go and pack their room up and then something happens to closing and then you oh, guys yeah. are delayed. Most it's parents hide terrible. it from them, you know. They don't terrible, even Terrible, right? So we want to avoid that. All right, next topic. What happens if it doesn't appraise? We have this happening, well, yeah. yesterday, didn't we? Yes, absolutely. It's a great question because when you got multiple offers, what do most of the offers do? Go over they, list price. Yeah, they right go now, over, they're going over list price. They're going over list price. Now, uh, in some areas, some neighborhoods, it, it might be tight to uh, to push that appraised value. Because and, uh, absolutely. Houses are maybe similar or, um, you know, it's just not warranted. Yeah, and we're seeing the problem right now is, if you all remember, uh, this is uh, episode 12, I believe. So we go back to about episode 8. We were talking about um, how it, things are so wild, wild west out here that these West people World. are paying so much. It's Westworld. <laughs> um, they're paying so much that we're going to see some appraisal issues. And guess what we're seeing right now? Yeah, appraisal issues. So what happens? Absolutely. Uh, when, when the appraisal comes in low... Um, Obviously, we got to go back and, and renegotiate, right? And I just tell you, I had one with you yesterday. You called me. He's like, "Uh oh, we got a little problem." Yeah, we got we got a little because typically what will happen is as long as it's not too bad. Didn't happen in my case because, of course, even you know, uh, uh, Mark said, "Are we still in season one?" Uh, um, but the, the the question is. He's throwing me off here. Uh, whether or not the seller is just going to lower their price to the appraised price. Nine times out of ten, that's what's going to happen as long as we're close. In this case, guess what they said? Uh-uh. We're not going to lower it all the way. And, and, you know, we had to negotiate some some of the terms of the contract in order to get it to work. Yeah, had to make changes. But you got to go back to the table. And, again, this is this is where, uh, you know, we, came, we got involved and worked with the buyer. Uh, because what we did was we, we lowered the seller contributions, okay, um, to offset some of the loss to the seller, right? Yep. And then we went in and bumped the interest rate and hey, added a lender credit, okay, to match the amount that the seller took off the table. Yep. So these are, you know, these are, seems like easy fixes to uh -huh. me, but, um, you know, it's not, it doesn't happen every time. You know, some people really struggle with with making this stuff work when you have when they run into problems. Yeah, I mean, and that's that, they. Well, here's the problem: they see it as money coming out of their pocket instead of the real true market value being. I mean, the now, granted, it's just one man's opinion on a certain day, right? I mean, that's what the definition of an appraiser is. I I think that in this case, though, we gotta we gotta be careful in that we don't run a good buyer off if I'm a seller, right? Yeah. Because I mean, you want top dollar, but but again, you know, this real estate transaction has a lot of moving parts, a lot of uh, pieces, a lot of time. So you got to start back over. If you said no, if the seller said no, we're done, then you're going to start back over. Well, you're going to get another appraisal, and it's probably going to come in. Could be coming lower. And, and the other thing is, huh, Sarah, you're too kind. Uh, we already, well, we're, well, your house will sell here. It's under contract. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I, I, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we talked about the pre-listing appraisal in a prior show. Yeah. And it you say, well, why do I need one in this market? So that you don't end up in situations like that if you're the seller. Yeah, and that's another reason not to get too excited when you get all those offers rolling in. Because you want, I mean, it's great to get 
ten, twenty, hundred thousand dollars over list price, whatever. That's exactly right. But, you know, it's hard for a buyer to to pay that money if um, they're looking at that appraisal and saying, "Well, the house isn't even worth that." Well, that's the problem. And, and remember, everybody gets buyer's remorse. Sir, it's not one buyer that I've ever had that did, didn't say at least for one fleeting moment. Am I doing the right thing? Should I be still buying this house? I don't know, right? It's up to you, but the, but here's the thing. You loved it enough to put an offer in on the house. Yeah. And uh, and really, the time for renegotiating is not at the time. I mean, we may, we're forced to renegotiate at the time of an appraisal issue. Yes. Right? But we're not renegotiating the whole contract. Yeah. Uh, big thing to remember. Moving on. Um, came across an article uh, talking about the four reasons that today's housing market is not 2016 all over again, right? Because, I mean, we get this question asked. Uh, and the question 2006. was... 2006. You said 16. Oh, yeah, 2016. 2016. Yeah. Touché. Hey, my favorite. Hello, Cafe Albacio Lee Catherine. Hey, it's one of our friends from the Summit. I mean, there not the Summit, go. from the Equinox. <laughs> she is a cool lady. Uh, Julia says hi. Um Anyway, uh, four reasons today's housing market is not 2016. And talk about home prices. We are actually, you know, here's the thing. I talked to you about my house not too long ago and saying if you took inflationary numbers, I paid 240 something for my house. Inflation adjusted numbers puts it at 298. I can't get 298 for the house. I can probably get 275, 280 for the house, mm -hmm. right? And it plays right along with the number uh, that they found, which was that home prices are still, even at this thing, 18% below where they were in 2016. I mean, 2006. There I go again. 2006. Right? So in, so your house is... We th That's we accounting for inflation. Keep that in mind. Absolutely. And what's the number that they number. use on that? Two two to three percent average a year? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And you'll have, you'll have it ebb and flow. You're right. Um, so... I mean, wow! Isn't that isn't that fascinating that we're still eighteen percent below? But here's the thing: we we for, here's the thing: inflation is real. Whether we, I mean, this same beer cost what three dollars today and was two dollars and a quarter in two thousand six, right? Well, why is that? It's not all because profits were going to Dos Equis, right? It's because inflation kicked in. Everything became more expensive that yeah. dollar. Yeah. Uh, and then the next one that I know you can talk to is mortgage standards are not where they were in 06. No, no. We had we had a, a whole lot of different programs, a whole lot of different programs. Um, and, and lending was kind of getting a little bit too excited. The market was too easy. Right. Right. Getting loans done was too easy. The commission to loan officers was completely different. Um, for example, I, you know, they, they had loan programs. And this was part of a huge part of the problem. Some of these bad loan programs that people were in were paying more, uh, two to three times more. So if I had a dishonest mortgage broker, what was happening? Well, here's the deal. I mean, and, and it's funny to say hey, Mitchell. dishonest. I feel like, um, I feel like, unfortunately, some, some parts of human nature <laughs> were taken you over. You mean greed? Greed, exactly. You had yes. some... Young people getting into a business, a real world that was business. a hot Absolutely. business at the time, and they could make a lot of money. So I could make two or three times the money, uh, do putting you in this right. loan, than I than putting you in a thirty year fixed, like the pay option arms, right? Right. Those neg am uh, one percent starter. <laughs> negative, I forgot about them. Negative amortization, one percent starter rates. Uh, all those those were paying two, three, four points. So. Uh, yeah, the lending world was completely different. Didn't matter what you made. Everybody thought real estate prices were going through the roof. So the banks are thinking, put them in a house. Who cares if they can't pay for it? Because when we take the house back in five years, it's going to be worth a whole lot more than it is today. So Absolutely. we'll take the risk. There just wasn't a whole lot of risk. And then they, I mean, there, there was just all kinds of spinoffs from the mortgage business that way. Well, right. And so you you know, they've gotten rid of these risky the riskiest of these loans. And Jay, same for what? Are you saying? Same for cuz Jay, you know, is a home builder here. So it's interesting to hear his take. Yeah. Uh, but so, you know, here's the thing. We're hearing especially from the conservative side of the aisle 
They're doing it again. They're lending out like the wild, wild west, and that's just not the case, is it? Well, I, it's not, and, I, and I'll admit that I do see some. No. I do. He said right. same for real estate agents, um, and I guess he was referring to uh, the greed and and the high oh, business yeah. and and people just throwing people into stuff. Um, I think that you know there are some new mortgage programs coming up. Getting in the business is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what he's saying. Just a flood of agents, just like the mortgage people uh, getting in the hot business. Are they operating today. a real business? I think that's the key, right? You, ben Chenault, who who owns yours, the reason you've been with him for 10 years is he's always had a 13. real... Oh, sorry. 13 years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that he runs a real business. I mean, let's just yeah. be clear. It's, it's a real business with real staff. Yeah. But it, <laughs> it was very reputable and always, you know, always done right by the client and always worried about reputation. I mean, that's a big deal. In Birmingham, and this is kind of a, a sidebar, but in Birmingham, this is a small market. I mean, you know, if I if I mess up with you today, yeah. it, it's not like I can it know, does get out, right? go down and hide. But we are seeing some new uh, programs come out that I don't I don't love, agree with, or want to do But they're not with. near like no-doc loans and no, all that. No, but the, still the majority is going to be 30-year fixed, conventional loans, FHA loans, uh, underwriting standards are changing a little bit to make things a little easier, but they're... Nowhere near what they were. The next one was mortgage debt that the consumer has and taken on. And here's what they said: at the height of the bubble market, which was been ending in 06, uh, homeowners were using about 7.21 percent of the disposable income on mortgage on their mortgage. Compared to today, the number's 4.48, so almost three percent decrease in the amount of their monthly disposable income that's going to that mortgage. Man, I think I think that's a product of what happened. I think a lot of people got scared. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people at the time leading up to that, I think a lot of people were buying in or drinking the Kool-Aid of real estate's always going to go up. You know, we got nothing to we worry about. We still got about. those people. <laughs> so, so I'll go charge up. I'll spend all the cash I got because, you know, I'm making money over here on this house. And I think a lot of people got scared when that happened, when the market got shook and banks were going out of business and people were concerned about, you know, the next depression, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that effect, that has, today that has a lot of effects on Trey. how people are saving money. Right. And how people are spending less on, to, to your point. I mean, 3% is a income. huge thing. And I don't think, we don't feel every day, those of us that have been in the same house for a while don't get it. Courtney, hey. Pick, pick of the week. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Inside joke, but uh, uh, she loved that. RCL. She, she, she just went. Mm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, but to me, I think sometimes we forget. There's Jenny. There she is. Uh, Jay's been uh, laying down some facts on us today. Yeah. Hey? Yeah. Jay's been sharing with us. Yes. Uh, Jay is an expert. Uh, and then we get into housing affordability. That. The housing prices, according to NAR, which, you know, eh, I'm not so sure, you know, how I feel about NAR. It's a liberal organization that's yeah. just awful. But uh, anyway, um, the, their economists have said that pr house prices have not been more affordable since 1985. So you, the housing is far more I, you affordable. Know, you know what, that, that ties back to, uh, those two things go together. So you're saying up here that... that uh, Prices are 18% below where they were in 2006. No question. And the houses are more affordable than ever. So Perfect. part of what's happened, if you'll go back and you know, if you've been watching us at all and paying attention to us, um, some of the stuff that we've been talking about is the benefit, there's things in the economy. The rates have been low. Yep. Money has been pumped to the consumer. And some people have been saving some money. So both of those things kind of go together that houses are more affordable for that reason. And you know what's really interesting? I'd love to see these same numbers separated between the sexes in terms of, because I, I think what I really saw. Call your always, always goes. I'm somewhere. not bringing it back to sex. I'm bringing it out to the sex of the person, which means uh, I saw women really say, we're not going to do this again a lot sooner than I saw men because we're consumers of junk, right? Yeah. Naturally. I mean, that's. You well, know. I think, I think it all ties back hey, to. Uh, Lieutenant Jesse Adams. There he is. There he is. Woo. Thank you, Jesse. But I think it all ties back to the economy. I think it ties back to Absolutely. Uh, coming out of those problems. And, you know, I'm not touting the government or what they did, but I think that we did make some 
some moves um, to correct the situation and the economy is back moving the way it should be. Um, and I think all of those points go to that. I, I, you know, I've been saying it because I noticed it earlier last year. And I remember I came to you and I said, hey, there, there's some stat in here regarding inflationary numbers that we need to share with people. Because I think it's something that we don't think about. Because we, we, we get, and I'm not trying to be a downer, but we think, oh, my, like my house example. Oh, it's worth two ninety eight now in two thousand six dollars, but that's irrelevant to what I could get in the open market for it, right? So, in essence, I have lost money. In essence, in the time I've lived there, but I've gotten to live there and that sort of thing. But I've probably made money in four hundred one k, in other ways exactly. to balance this back out. And exactly. I, I think there's uh, been more cash flow. Hopefully, there's been more savings. There has been appreciation in the stock market. Any investments that you got in there, um, so so definitely all of those. All of those benefits are spinning off. Absolutely. Of that. And by the way, I, I'll go ahead and give you my stock pick of the week. Are you listening? Are you listening? Here we go. Here we go. WWE blew past earnings today. WWE for you that for, yes. for those that don't know. Worldwide. World Wrestling Entertainment. Entertainment. World Wrestling Entertainment. World Wrestling. I've been on, I've been on them since December, up 30% on the year, but blue earnings. But if you're going to load the boat, it would help me. For you to get RCL, <laughs> look up what it is. It's Royal a, Caribbean. It's hammered. So load the boat. It is a cruise line. Woo! Ship it all in there. It, look, if solid earnings. Fun. Great company. Pays yeah. a dividend. Man, can't beat it. All right. Well, well guys, we appreciate you yeah, joining absolutely. in. Absolutely. Jay, we appreciate your comments. Uh, Build you Tech have LLC. A, a beautiful week. Enjoy Cinco de Mayo. Jesse, um, make sure she treats you good, Jesse. Don't let her take advantage of you. But the rain has moved out. Just a little bit of rain on Saturday. Not near as much as they thought, so it should be beautiful and hot this weekend. So you guys have a great time. All right. We'll see you same time, same place next week. See Talk you to you guys. soon. Bye-bye.